Steve Bowers welcoming you to Dialogue here at E Plus TV 6. This conversation is with Matthew Marshall. In his life, he has become the new director of the Hands Up Preschool program here in Jackson and, and Madison County. So it's an opportunity to, to meet him, talk with him, and also find out about this program and, and let you know where he sees this program headed. So it's good to have you with us. Yeah, Congratulations on, on, on this. Yeah, and, thank you, thank you. Wanted to talk, you say you are from Jackson, born and raised in Jackson. Correct, yeah, that's right. Uh, and so uh, my uh, father's side of the family is from here, and so um, I was a uh, product of the, of the public school system. I graduated from JCM uh, in 2002. Uh, and I went to school at Union as well, so I, okay. I've so been through Jackson been at every level. Okay. Yeah. So did you do all your academic work there at Union? Uh, most of it. Yeah. Um, I did. Uh, I went there as a freshman actually to uh, play soccer, uh, and I transferred out after that and moved to Arizona for a couple of years and went to school there in uh, Tucson. Uh, but then I actually came back and finished my degree at, at Union. At Union. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, what have you been doing professionally for the last few years then? Yeah, so uh, after I graduated from Union, um, I actually uh, was blessed to have the opportunity to get a job there. Uh, and so I started out in enrollment, recruiting students. Uh, then I moved to student life uh, on the retention side. Uh, and then my last three years at Union, I spent in university ministries. Okay. Um, so I, eight years there total. There, right. what, what, what is the role in student life? Uh, what, what are mm -hmm. you trying to do there? Yeah, so uh, what, we're, what we ultimately uh, were trying to do and what the great folks there still are, are trying to do are provide a, a, a conducive atmosphere for uh, the students that they can uh, be able to socialize, but also uh, be able to uh, do well academically. Okay. Uh, and so there's a, a number of different facets to it, um, but ultimately we, we student life is, is, is charged with uh, creating a, a culture uh, for the university and for the student body uh, that helps them to succeed. Then as in student ministries, what, what was that role? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so um, I uh, oversaw our community service uh, uh, initiatives, okay. and so I work with many different people in the city to send out volunteers into the city uh, to serve in different projects. I uh, also helped with our chapel programming. Um, uh, one of my main uh, roles was actually as uh, director of service to diversity initiatives. So I worked a lot with the minority students on campus as well to make sure um, that we uh, retain them, but also that they were uh, able to graduate and go on to get good jobs and those type of things. All right, we're talking to Matthew Marshall. Matthew is the the new director of the Hands Up Preschool program. So what attracted you to this job? Then? Yeah, so um, uh, Donna Agnew, the, the founder of uh, Hands Up, uh, actually called me. Uh, Is that went, right? Yeah. Okay. So had y'all met in your outreach from Union? Or? Exactly. Okay. Um, and so I had sent uh, students to Hands Up uh, a few times uh, in my role uh, as director over community service, uh, over uh, campus and community day specifically. Uh, and so I had interacted with Donna a little bit because of that. Um, and so, uh, but I didn't know her particularly well and honestly didn't know um, Hands Up that well either. And so, uh, you know, we uh, got introduced, she called me, and um, she asked me to just come and, and to uh, look at the school. Um, I hadn't been too aware that they were looking for a new director. Okay, uh, so she knew she was looking for you, but you didn't know. You didn't <laughs> that's know right, that. okay. that's right, yeah. All yeah. right. So when you went there then, uh, and then found out that they're looking for a director here, okay, what, what attracted you or what happened then to bring you to this position? Yeah, we... Uh, you know, toured the school, she showed me around, and uh, we sat down for about 45 minutes, and she uh, began to have uh, a, a deeper discussion about kind of the work of Hands Up and all that, you know, it, it uh, entails and, and what uh, they do. And the thing that really attracted me, um, I previously, um, during my time in college, I actually took a year and a half break. And during that period of time, I worked in the public school system here in Jackson at Thelma Barker as an assistant teacher in a special needs classroom. So I had worked with kids before um, and, and really had begun to feel like I was going to be headed back in that direction career-wise at some point. Um, she didn't know that. Um, but uh, as we sat down and, and discussed everything um, that Hands Up does, I was really just struck by the program as a whole. Um, that it was a very holistic program. Um, so it not only uh, was their interaction and it benefited the, the children themselves, the preschoolers, the three and four year olds, but also um, it brought in the families to be active in the program. Uh, and so that, you know, that holistic piece is really what attracted okay. me. All right. and so, so it responded to a kind of a calling then in, mm -hmm. in your yeah. life in, in a sense. When did you commit to do this? Did you do some more interviews with her or, or with the board? Or Yeah, uh, I met with Donna uh, a couple of times. We talked on the phone a couple of times. Uh, I then uh, had an interview with the board. Um, 
Uh, and then after meeting with the board, I then had a, a meeting with all of the lead uh, and assistant teachers. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I met with all of them. So when did you decide to do this? I think the decision was made probably uh, sometime in the end of March, beginning of April. Okay. Mm -hmm. What pushed you over where you said, okay, I'm going to, because you, you've been in a union, you've been in a union <laughs> yeah. eight years, right? Just yeah. not like you're looking for a job. Yeah. You have a job, you have work, you like that work. It's yeah. important work. Yeah, for sure. And so you say, okay, I'm going to leave this setting. It's a big change. Yeah, it was a huge change, and um, and I know this is you know uh, might sound weird for different people, and I understand that. Uh, I wasn't really comp even though I was attracted to it when Donna and I sat down, I wasn't a hundred percent sold um, because I did have a good job and I had a lot of freedom in in my position at Union, and um, I, I saw a lot of opportunity for growth there, and there were a lot of exciting things happening. Uh, with Dr. Oliver having come in these Because he two comes out years. of that student orientation he, background. Yeah. He does as well. It's not like you're a foreign entity when you walk in to talk to him. No, right? not at yeah. all. And uh, he and I had a great relationship. Uh, and oddly enough, uh, Susie, his wife, sits on the board for Hands Up. Oh, is that uh, right? Okay. And so uh, we, we <laughs> joked about this after the fact, but it kind of so put them in a... So she knew you were looking. <laughs> <laughs> it put them in kind of like, you know, a weird position. But, okay. you know, they both were great. And, uh, and, Dr., and Dr. Oliver was, you know, Dub was super supportive. But, um, but yeah, I wasn't 100% sold on it. And uh, the part that may be a little weird for folks, um, you know, honestly, I, I was sitting in my living room, uh, listening to um, uh, jazz music on my record player, mm -hmm. uh, kind of staring at the wall, thinking about it uh, and praying about it and felt honestly, as, as much as it is possible as though I heard the Lord say that he wanted me to pursue this. Uh, and, and I say that uh, somewhat hesitantly because I've not had many experiences like that in my life. Uh, so it was very unique, and, and now that being said, I did not hear, uh, I didn't feel like I heard the voice say, you're going to get the job. So I hadn't fully gone through all the process and hadn't met with the board yet at that point. And so um, just, you know, like that I should pursue it. And so I decided, you know, talk with my wife about it and uh, talked with uh, the lead pastor at our church about it and some other folks and just felt like, well, I'll at least take the steps and interview and go through that whole thing. And um, after going through that process, you know, the board unanimously voted for me to come in and I had a good interview with the teachers as well, and so it just all came together. Okay. Matthew is, uh, is the uh, new director of the Hands Up Preschool. You talked about the holistic approach, mm -hmm. okay, there. You're yeah. working with families and, and everything else. What else did you see then where, you know, when, you know, yeah, that, that sense of that I should do this or I want to do this yeah. or whatever is rare in, the, in this life? I mean, a lot of times, well, it's the money or, you know, career right. advancement yeah. or whatever, and, uh, you know, and this is a different kind of move completely. Yeah, certainly. And, you know, again, uh, a lot of people, even people close to me, thought it was kind of odd to move from higher education. Mm -hmm. um, into preschool. Into preschool, you know. And, um, and an administrative role. In an administrative role as yeah. well. And so, um, you know, the I think part of it was, was uh, the demographics of folks that we tend to work with. Um, you know, most of our families are uh, at-risk families. Um, they're families in need. Um, I think about 70% of our uh, families are single parent um, households. Um, a lot of them moms, not all of them, but many of them moms who are just trying to make it. Um, and I care about our community. Um, and I care about our, uh, our educational uh, environment in our community. And so again, I'm, you know, as I mentioned before, I'm a product of the public school system, so I care about the public school system. Uh, my kids are in the public school system. Um, and so for that reason, um, I want to make sure that uh, the systems we have in place succeed. Uh, right. And so Donna, the founder of the school, uh, she was a public school teacher several years ago, uh, taught third grade. And she would have students that would come into her classroom unable to read. And she knew uh, just from her previous background, she had worked in uh, some other school settings, and yeah. she just knew that, you know, you need to reach kids as early as you can. Okay. And I felt the same way. All right. yeah. Matthew Marshall is with us, and we're talking about Hands Up uh, Preschool, and uh, we'll continue this conversation here at D Plus TV.
Welcome back to Dialogue at D Plus TV 6. We are talking with Matthew Marshall. As we do this program in, uh, in 2017, he is the new director of the Hands Up Preschool. I want to set, set that in, in motion. We've been talking about his background. He's from Jackson, if you're just joining us, and raised here and was working at Union University and had been out there eight years in student life capacity, student ministries, is now taking this on. All right, this is a different role, and this is a... Uh, uh, you know, Hands Up Preschool is there. You know, it doesn't have guaranteed funding. It's, it's yeah, you know, it's all those true. challenges out mm -hmm. there. It's an administrative role, but you obviously believe in this. Yes, and, certainly. And, and, and believe so. So, you know, so where, where do we take that? This program it expanded from mm -hmm. like three and four year olds to you've added two year olds. We now. did. We last year uh, was the first year that uh, we had a two year old program. Uh, but the reality is, and this is again part of the financial situation and all of that is that uh, the current facility that we are located in is actually, we found that it was too small. Too small for this, um, okay. Yeah, we, we began last year with 90 kids. Um, and, and we just found that the space was too cramped for that many classrooms, that many children. And so we actually made the decision, uh, the tough decision this year, to go back to just threes three and fours. And fours. Okay. Uh, but we hope uh, to we be able bring to raise the funding your... and yeah, to bring okay. the twos back in. At right, so so what's ahead for Hands Up then? Is as far as that facility, you want mm -hmm. to go somewhere else or expand or build? Yeah, or yeah there's been a number of different conversations that have happened. Um, uh, we, uh, by the uh, uh, grace of the mayor uh, and, the, uh, and some other folk in the city, uh, we had some conversations a, a couple of years ago and they uh, arranged uh, to, to grant us some land um, over off Effie Wright Drive where we could potentially build a new facility. Um, and so there, that's been a discussion that's been ongoing um, and we would have to do a capital campaign for all of that. Uh, but uh, most recently, uh, there's been a, a conversation uh, with the school system. Um, I went and presented uh, myself and Ben Ferguson, who's on our board. Uh, we went and presented before the school board a couple of weeks ago uh, about the possibility of the Whitehall uh, building, uh, that facility, which is, uh, is currently vacated. Um, the pre-K program, the public pre-K program had formerly been yeah. there. And so we feel like that would be a great option as well if, if the school board would agree with that. And so uh, there's, there's some options. Okay. What, what then is the growth potential of this program? Did, mm -hmm. do you, if, you, if you get another facility, you go back and add the two-year-olds, was that working? Yes, yeah, it was working great, and, uh, and, and we would really love to, to be able to do that again. And so, yeah, the hope would be if we were able to either to build a new facility or to move into an existing uh, facility that we would add back, uh, add the two-year-old programs back, but also that it potentially would give us uh, more classrooms, uh, so we could even add maybe one or two, three and four year old classrooms, depending on the space and size. Now, one thing that happens with, with, with Hands Up is, is it becomes a family program in mm -hmm. many ways. Parents have, yeah. they sign agreements that they'll help s support the school as far as time and volunteering right, and other exactly. things, right? I yeah, mean, exactly. So, mm -hmm. so it, it becomes kind of a cumulative effort. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and so it's, it's got its own thing. I think one of the challenges has been, and I think in talking to Donna when they, when they did this, is that it's almost... I don't want to say experimental, and that mm -hmm. may be, but uh, these children are in a different environment than many. And there, and there are other good preschools. Right, yeah, certainly, definitely. And so, uh, but, but the idea of this is trying to address that situation that she was seeing in public schools mm -hmm. where a child is, gets into the third grade and they can't read. And if, they, yeah. if, that, if that doesn't change, is, and we've had presentations from superintendents at first Friday forums and everything else down through right. the years that by the mm -hmm. sixth grade, these children are out of sorts and they know it and yeah, they're going to be trouble. Okay. Yeah. So I think everybody agrees this could be very, very important work. I guess the concern has been is you can only handle so many children. You know, out of yeah. 600, yeah. You know, we're, yeah. we're talking about 60 or 90 or, yeah, or, or that's whatever. Right, yeah. and so that becomes the thing. Is there something in this approach that can be replicated, expanded, or could it work definitely. elsewhere in the public school system? Yeah, I definitely think so. And that and that's a conversation that we have had and, and we continue to, to talk about a lot. I do think it's a, it's a, it can become a model. Um, and so... A big part, as you may mention of, is family involvement, uh, parental involvement. And so uh, every single one of our families, uh, when they uh, sign their contract with us, uh, they're committing to three volunteer hours a month. Uh, they're also uh, agreeing to uh, a monthly parenting class. Um, and, and those parenting classes look like a lot of different things. Sometimes they are just basics of parenting, but other times it's how to build a credit, uh, how to build your credit, uh, how to budget. Uh, we're doing one this fall on how to buy a house. Um, so these are life skills that we're also uh, exposing these families to. Uh, and again, for, for many of these families, uh, they might not have had these opportunities uh, somewhere else. 
uh, because tuition can be expensive. So we're an income-based program. Uh, and so we're giving opportunities uh, to parents who might not have any other options. Uh, and that becomes very important because what that means is for some of these children, they might not have been able to be in some other childcare facility. Okay. Um, so okay. kindergarten might have been their first exposure, exposure. To, to, you know, organized uh, academic setting. Uh, and so we're trying to get them at two and three years old so they can enter that environment a lot earlier um, and be exposed to that a lot earlier and begin to learn a lot earlier. Um, and so that becomes really important for like things like reading. Um, so we do a Bracken's assessment uh, of all of our children uh, beginning of the year, end of the year. Uh, it's the same assessment that, uh, the, uh, that most, that they use nationally uh, in public schools. Uh, and our kids, 99% of them have, uh, have scored at proficient or above proficiency in the Bracken's when they leave. Okay, when they leave, okay. And so we know the program's working. Uh, and, and particularly that parental involvement piece, I think is one of the big reasons why it works. Uh, and so, uh, we're training parents to be involved in their child's education um, and, and in that environment. And so when they yeah, enter into yeah. the public school system, schools, they'll continue yeah. to do that. I'm, I'm wondering, of course, you know, the public school system is, is not in a position to demand a contract, right? True, okay. yeah, true I mean, enough, yeah, to a certain yeah, degree, yeah. 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 I, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm wondering if there are elements in this that could be replicated or expanded or if parents wanted to on a volunteer mm -hmm. basis or whatever. Yeah. You know? Of course, it's... You know, there's as you know, with schools, there's security issues and who yeah, gets on yeah. the campus and mm -hmm. all this other. I mean, there are a lot yeah. of the, there are a lot of things logistically. You're you're better able to control. I would think just because of the volume, you're going to know these right. parents yes, and all these other definitely. things, right? And, mm -hmm. and and all that. So I'm, I'm just wondering because I've been intrigued by this. And if you're getting these kind of results, mm -hmm. and it's been there long enough to see, mm -hmm. but if children are coming out at, at the other end of this, yeah. at, a, at a proficient level, getting ready to launch into kindergarten, then it's like, okay, if this is working then why can't we do this elsewhere or expand or I, I think you know I think you bring up some of the questions that that are that are asked you know um, you know as far as safety and all those type of things with people coming on campus and, and, and if all I'm running a public school I've got a real challenge security you do wise. you do that, right? that's I mean, true. just the yeah. volume of people I've got and whatever mm -hmm. like I said I'm gonna know you you're gonna know me if we got yeah. 60 and it but it, I know that there's a thing that says, well, we need more parental involvement. We need, mm -hmm. But that is not as easily done in a larger setting. It, it, it isn't, but I think one of the solutions is kind of what we're doing, which is you do it on the front end. Okay. And so if you train parents on the front end to be involved and to be volunteering and to do all those things, mm -hmm. well, it makes the process a lot simpler for them and for the schools mm -hmm. as you go down the road. Okay. Um, and so because what, it, what it'll create is it'll create a, a, a group of parents entering into the system with certain expectations mm -hmm. that they will have opportunities to be involved. Oh, so when they get to the schools, they'll demand those opportunities in a healthy way. Um, and I think that's when you start seeing, you know, one of the things okay. that has happened in education uh, for the most part uh, nationally over the last uh, 10 to 15 years is that um, many schools have seen a decrease in, uh, in uh, PTA type of organizations. Right. Right. And so those, you know, some schools still have them, they're doing well, but many of them, they're not doing as great. Um, and so if you start to train those parents on the front end uh, to be involved and to volunteer and all that, you can see the rise of those type of organizations. Uh, and that history has shown us that okay. those organizations were helpful. Well, that family structure has changed dramatically in three decades. And you go back four yeah. or five decades yeah. when I was in school. I mean, it's just, you know, because PTAs, I think part of it, you know, the Parent Teachers Association, whatever, or, you know, the friends or, or mm -hmm. have been, you know, the essential. In many cases, moms were available yeah. to anchor yeah. all this uh -huh. stuff. This stuff. And the, the, the environment that we're in now is a very different environment. Correct. And, yeah, and so those traditional true. structures may change. We're talking to Matthew Marshall. He is the director of the Hands Up Preschool program here. We'll continue this conversation on dialogue here at E Plus TV 6. Welcome back to Dialogue at E Plus TV 6. We are talking with Matthew Marshall. He is the executive director of the Hands Up Preschool program here in Jackson. Donna Agnew started this program, mm -hmm. and uh, Matthew has moved into the executive director's position here. And so if you're just joining us, be sure to catch us on replay. We found out about Matthew. He's born and raised here in Jackson and uh, is excited to be in this 
in this position sees great potential there. I, I think when, when I go to conversations, I've been covering, covering it for a long time with, with public education, you know, it's it, 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 they were all wanting the same thing mm -hmm. out of this. When you when you get, well, we want a safe environment, we want a learning environment, yeah. and everything else. You know, the, the, there are challenges logistically in, in doing that. But then, I, my impression is sometimes well, we need to blow up the structure. Then. You know, if <laughs> if you if, if it takes it, because you know it is a challenge. Security mm -hmm. is a challenge, and we don't. You know, the schools that we have were built many years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I remember talking to one of the principals at, at Northside one time. I forget how many hundreds of doors he said they had in that yeah. building, and they have multiple buildings. You yeah. know, and spread. Uh -huh. it, it, it was it, you know opened in the 1940s. Mm -hmm. Well, it, there was no anticipation about school shootings or any of this other stuff, yeah. or yeah, divorced parents or custody fights or any yeah. of that stuff. Yeah. You don't get into that. You know, mm -hmm. and so it, it's it's bringing this about. And I think this is what makes Hands Up such an exciting. Thing is that mm -hmm. it's almost I won't, don't want to say an incubator or whatever, mm -hmm. but it, if it's getting demonstrable results, mm -hmm. then you can yeah. say okay, all right. Where do you take this? Then you've got to raise money for this program. How do yeah. people get involved in this if they want to be involved? And, and then and then also selling, you know, this is not a total preschool. It's a preschool right. for a certain number of, of children. Yeah. Here. So yeah, why do I want being, in, at least. Yeah, <laughs> at least yeah, why do I want yeah. to invest in this? Yeah. yeah I, you know, I think um, again, as we spoke about a moment ago, um, before the break. We want a good public school system. We want a good system as a whole, edu education-wise. You know, even in a place like Jackson, Tennessee, because it brings in jobs. Oh, There's absolutely. a lot of other reasons, right? So, yeah. not only does it educate our children and provide a great platform for them in the future, but it also provides a great platform for the community, the community right now. Well. Yeah, exactly. You know, and so, so that is really, really important. And so, we want to invest in organizations and, and, and in schools that are trying to strengthen the community. And I think that hands up, we're one of those schools doing that. There are others as well. But you know that's a huge part of who we are, and so your investment in, in our program is an investment in the community. Um, and so, you know, we have you know tons of needs. Um, you know, whether it be uh, small everyday needs like uh, donations of of uh, uh, sharpie pins or uh, of uh, you know coloring sheets or, or whatever it might be. Uh, we have small needs, and you know anyone can go on our Facebook page uh, and they can. You know, find out what some of those needs are, and and, and you know, the Facebook happy. page just is it hands up? Uh huh. Yeah, hands up preschool. preschool just you can Facebook, you know okay. uh, search that on Facebook, and it'll come right up. Um, and you can you know, we're always posting on there updates and those type of things. Uh, and so we're getting ready to start school right now. And so um, you know, there there are ways that people can can help us out by donating um, you know things that we that we request on there. Uh, but we have need for volunteers. Um, our, our program is is built on. Uh, the backs of volunteers in a lot of ways, uh, you know, they help us out tremendously. Uh, and so uh, without, you know, their help, uh, without us being able to stand on their shoulders, uh, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. And so we have volunteers that come in and help with the serving of our meals every day. We have volunteers that come in and read to our children. Uh, we have volunteers that come in and help with our yard work, just uh, tons of different things. And a lot, a lot of times, a lot of our parents do those same tasks. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we do still have needs uh, for others to come and help us. And so people can come and volunteer to do that. Uh, we have several teachers who are, are maybe retired now who uh, offer their services as substitutes when we have need for that. And so we have need for subs. Um, but we also have financial needs as well uh, to be able to get to where we would like to go uh, in the future. Uh, and so people donating to our, to our school and uh, helping us with fundraisers and all those type of things are very important. If we want to either be able to build a, a new facility, uh, which you know, we might want to do, uh, depending on how the conversations with the school board course, happens, okay. um, or if, even if we move into a current facility like the Whitehall building, we still would need to do a capital uh, campaign, campaign for that. Yeah. And so, um, you know, so we have you know, significant financial needs there as well and just the day-to-day -day operations. Um, but again, I, I would encourage people by, by reminding them, uh, investing in a school like Hands Up is investing in the community. Um, and so it's gonna strengthen our community what we're doing uh, okay. over the long term. Where do you wanna see this go then in, in your, you know, when, you, when you're yeah. listening to that jazz and you're, you're by yourself and you say, okay, this could be <laughs> what? Yeah, I, I really do believe that this could be, uh, in a lot of ways, like you said, an uh, incubator. Um, a, a model, uh, but also uh, a starting point for so many families. 
Um, ultimately, what I would love to see is for our program to grow in numbers, both the numbers of students and families we're able to serve, but also uh, with the number of teachers that we have in our, in our school, um, the, the number of, uh, uh, of people doing the administration side and all of that type of stuff. I want to see growth. But the reason why I want to see growth is because that means that we're going to be putting more prepared and ready children into the school system. So the more kids we have in our pre-K program and who are passing those assessments with flying colors, uh, the more children we have to be able to be ready day one in kindergarten. Um, and that's just going to mean that they're going to uh, have a better, uh, better educational outcomes, uh, their families are going to have better uh, outcomes, and our community is going to have better outcomes. So I would like to see growth in that way. I would love to one day uh, be able to uh, set up uh, some type of system, if it were possible, um, where I'm essentially able uh, to take kids from my school and insert them into every elementary school in our system. <clears throat> excuse me, where I would be able to make sure every classroom has prepared students in, uh, there. Um, and again, you know, there are going to be other preschools who are doing good work. The public pre-K mm -hmm. program is doing good work. And so it's just going to strengthen what's already happening. Um, I would love for to see that happen. And, and, and in the long term, these kids going, going on, graduating from high school, graduating from college, getting master's and, and doctoral degrees and all those things as well. Yeah. It, well, it's... Um I think this community, we have talked and struggled and danced and tried mm -hmm. to figure out ways to do this, and it's re refreshing to, to see this spark there, and, 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 and so I'm hoping that this you know, can cause us to find some things in this and the other things that are happening as we expand pre-K and everything else to say this, this works. Children, you know, have some kind of spark, I think, in most cases, unless they come out of just extraordinarily tough circumstances. Sometimes that spark mm. can go away early, but in many cases, it, it's there. And uh, you want to see that continue. You do, and you, you know, you had asked me uh, why uh, I got involved in this work, and that also was a big part of it. Um, there is a um, innocence, a naivety, uh, a uh, joy that mm. children have. Mm. Um, that unfortunately many of us as we get older we, we tend to lose that spark a little bit. So well, being able to be around that all every day is exciting to I me. I think sometimes that we reduce expectations of students too, of mm. children. It's like, well they're not going to make it or it's going to be tough or well I don't know. And, yeah, you know, and we're going to spend this money, you know, uh, and we're talking now about expanding our incarceration capacity here and, mm. and other things yeah. and it's yeah. like, wow, you know, and, and that's another issue and, and it's important but it's work. related because if we didn't reach think, them early yeah, we might not might, need that might, yeah, 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 I, I, yeah i would hope that that's, yeah. that's where we are yeah. well i wish you the best of this it's, yeah, it's good you. to meet you thank and, you. Nice and to meet appreciate you as well. of that that opportunity and, and if you want to get involved in this there's facebook hands up preschool is on facebook uh, website we do have a website handsupjackson.com handsupjackson.com yeah, and uh, and they can reach us you know anytime at uh 731-300 hand okay. uh, and we'll we'll serve if, uh, them the best parents grandparents interested in in Per, per, enrolling, they, they can find out the information there? Yeah, right? they, can, they can give us a call, they can go to the Facebook okay. page, they can go to our website, um, they can stop by and see us. Um, okay. We, we right. would love, we still Continu have some spots. Yeah, so. right. Continue to best you. Yeah, thank appreciate you. the thank opportunity you appreciate to talk to Matthew Marshall, and he is the director of the Hands Up Preschool here in Jackson. Thanks to Matthew for being with us, thanks to you for, for being with us, and stay with us here at E Plus TV 6. This is the place where the dialogue continues.